Let's talk about Kobe Bryant. Yeah, no, uh, Kobe took care of me a lot when I was in Los Angeles. Uh, you know, me and him were the first two to practice every single day. Uh, you know, the last ones to leave. You know, my personal coach, David Thorpe, who works for ESPN, um, you know, was always preaching to me, you got to be the first one there. You have to, you're trying to make, trying to make a team. It's, you know, and for me, that's was simple. I had done that my whole life. College, I always tried to be the first one in the gym. Gives you time to work on what you got to work on. But the first day I got to Los Angeles, I walk in at, we have 10 o'clock practice. It's eight o'clock. I walk in, I'm going to get some, some work done, get in the weight room. And I hear a ball bouncing on the, on, on the practice course. So I walk around the corner and sure enough, it's Kobe with three or four of the ball boys rebounding for him. So I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Uh, I guess I'm going to have to get here a little earlier. Next day comes, get there at like 7.45. Sure enough, Kobe's already in there. Um, so that was kind of how our relationship started. We were the first two in the gym for a few hours. And then after two or three days, I was working on my stuff down one end with some rebounders. And he was down the other. And uh, he, yelled, he yells down to me, Rook, let's play some one-on-one. So for about 20 days, I had to play one-on-one -on -one against... Arguably the great one of the greatest one-on-one -on -one players ever. So, played so what's the game. your record in one-on-ones versus Kobe? We didn't keep a record there, ah, but uh, <laughs> he was, you know. So, and then, but it was cool because some days he would say, "All right, I'm only going to score with my left hand today. I'm only using my left hand. Uh, everything I score today is going to be in the paint. Don't let me get into the paint. Everything I score today is going to be a jump shot. Um, everything I score today is going to be a layup." He would always change the his his rules of the game and. Uh, he was like, you know, he would tell me, foul me, do whatever you got to do against him. Like, just, yeah. He's like, I know your MO is to be a defensive stopper. You were a defense All-American in college. I know everything about your defensive game. Uh, stop me. So that was a lot easier said than done. Because <laughs> there's no stopping Kobe, especially in those, in those days. But, uh. Yeah, sure enough. So, like, we went through the preseason, and we developed a very good relationship. Uh, we were in the locker room one day before a game, um, and my locker would happen to be right next to Kobe's um, at the Staples Center. And we were talking. Kobe got up to go through his uh, pregame warm-up on the court, his routine. He gets up, walk, walks out. Lamar Room looks at me, and he goes, Man, I have no idea why he likes you so much. He hates rookies. And I was just... Yeah, I was like, you know, it is what it is. So going into our last preseason game, they do like the rookie initiation trip to Las Vegas. Uh, you play a game in Las Vegas and you, there's like a big party that, you know, supposed to initiate the new rookies they have coming in. They had already released the four or five other free agent rookies that they brought in that had a chance to make the team. And I was the last one standing. So I think, you know, not only myself, but the team assumed that I had made their roster. Yeah. Uh, so they, they did throw a party for me there. Uh, when we first got there, we were in the high stakes room. And again, I'm a rookie, so I don't have money that belongs anywhere near the high stakes <laughs> room. Uh, so, you know, I'm watching the guys having fun. Uh, we're just relaxing. The guy, some of the guys are throwing some money around and Kobe comes up to me and he says, you know, what are you doing, Rook? And I said, just watch him. I'm like, I do not. Uh, I don't have this kind of money uh, yet. I'm like, you know, being a rookie. Uh, yeah, I can't. So he called over one of the the pit ladies that were one of like the the managers, I guess you could say. And he threw his card down and he said, "Get my rookie ten stacks." And I didn't know what ten stacks meant at the time, <laughs> but sure enough, it meant ten thousand dollars. And, you know, when guys are playing, you know, $1,000 hands of blackjack or, you know, because it's your, it's, it, it was special, like a special night, you know, it's not like got, you go, guys don't go to Vegas every weekend, but for us, it's like a kickoff party for the season. It's like, you know, going on the plane, Phil Jackson came into the, to, to the back of the plane and was like, listen, the outcome of this game is irrelevant. It, I don't want anybody getting hurt. And I don't want to see anybody on the news tomorrow for getting in trouble. That's all I have to say. Um, have some fun. We do this stupid trip for you guys. Uh, is it, is it the last 
time to, to have a chance to get loose before the season starts. Exactly. I mean, we're talking exactly. about 82 games. It's a long season. Yeah. It's a grueling season. So the fact that they do that for the team, I think, says a lot about the organization. You know, they know what is at hand. And sure enough, for them, it actually worked out pretty well because the Lakers ended up winning the NBA championship that year. Um, but, yeah. And, and so sure enough, the lady brings me over... Ten thousand dollars in chips, and the first thing I wanted to do was run. Yeah, get put it in my pocket and, and get up and go. <laughs> but I couldn't do that. And sure enough, thirty minutes later, it was gone. <laughs> but uh, yeah, to, you know, to have like a, a like a story like that yeah. as a little rookie from just outside of Boston, uh, you know. For me, that was uh, the, the whole experience with them was very surreal, and, and it was yeah, it was a special time for me. And you know, the the way Kobe embraced me and took me under his wing, and not just with that, but the way he treated me on a basketball court was yeah, it's something that. And I'll, you had you for, with, the, with an assist for your first NBA point, was that he, right? Yeah, he did. Uh, yeah. It was you can it was on YouTube, and uh, yeah, I have that video as well. Uh, not many players can say that their first NBA points. Or on the social Kobe Bryant. I don't know if there are any other players that can say that. But, uh, yeah, so I'll forever have a, a cool little tie with Kobe Bryant. Would you have that kind of a special relationship uh, with him? What's your take on, on his injuries? I mean, he just came back from the Achilles, um, then played a couple of games, and then he has this, this knee thing, and he's out for nobody knows for, for how long. So, so from... Everything you experience with, with him, what's your take on, on the situation? Could you imagine him coming back and being any, 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 anyone near to the, the Kobe we know? I mean. Yeah, I think that's a good question. Because um, I've said it for years since I've, since I've known him. He's the hardest working basketball player I've ever been around. The work that he puts into his game is... That's the reason he's been the greatest player in the game for so long. Um, you know, it's there's no surprise to that after watching how hard he works. So the fact that people are ruling him out to come back a star in this league is somewhat comical to me because I don't think he'll accept anything but that. Yeah. You know, I don't think, you know, I think that he's going to come back and he'll find a way to be the Kobe of old one way or another. And, uh... Yeah, it'll be interesting to see because, you know, obviously, you know, as you get older, that doesn't lie. You know, your body gets older. Um, but with that said, he works so hard that I'm sure he's working right now on ways to come back probably better than he was before. You know, I think we might see a different Kobe when he comes back. But with that said, maybe, I... Maybe different. That, that was what I was thinking about because uh, first when he came back after the Achilles uh, injury, I mean, he was more of a floor general. Like because, a facilitator. Yeah, yeah. Was it. I mean, he had huge assistance. I mean, you look at those few games, I mean, he had a couple of yes, but that was because he had some some stills, got some, was some, some kind of rusty. But uh, when, when you look at him facilitating the ball and, and you know, just playing, playing more of a point guard, it was, it was nice to see. Yeah, for, for sure. And, and I think that that, that will prolong it. is the fact that he is just such a good basketball player. You know, being able to do so many different things, and you know, I think you know he could have three or four years left to play because, yeah, he works so hard, and I don't think that it's going to be hard to keep him away from the game and keep him from being a great dominant.